Boom. That was an early boom. What's up, everybody? How we doing? How we feeling? Welcome to episode 18 of the Final Vibe Podcast. My name is Kevin Reap, and alongside me is my co-host, Andrew White. It's me. I'm here as always. By your side, your faithful cohort. Who Who's at the table with us? Nobody. Nobody at the table tonight. Just us. A solo episode, which we uh, continue to be surprised that uh, people seem to enjoy these episodes. You know, that makes me so happy because maybe they like spending time with us. Maybe they do. It's maybe like, do you think do. that... Do you think that they're sort of thinking of us as their friends now? That would be sweet. Yeah, that would be really nice. That would yeah. warm my heart. That would uh, that would warm my heart as well. Maybe we are we feel the same way to all of our listeners. I for sure do. We and really you know do. what I would love to see more of, honestly? Uh people saying hi. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Digitally or in person. Yeah, either way. Say hi. Let us know what you think. Let us know that you're listening and uh give us some feedback. Like I'm open to good feedback and bad feedback. But if you're gonna give bad feedback, be nice about it, right? Because <laughs> yeah. we have feelings too. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We want constructive feedback. Kevin, what's on the docket for tonight? I think we're going to talk about some updates for us personally, the goals that we're pursuing, where we're at right now in our lives as we enter the month of October. And then we will also chat about some exciting things coming down the pike for Final Vibe. Absolutely. Also, happy October. Happy October. I don't know Mm -hmm. how it's already October, but it is. Here we are. Uh, I saw somebody tweet today that they start Christmas music on October 1st. When do you start Christmas music? Man, I'm not really like big into Christmas music. Like I'm not okay. against it by any means. I sure. don't want people thinking I'm a Grinch. I just don't like play it like while I'm in the gym in December. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know. I play it a lot. I don't think I've ever played it at the gym, but right. I, I'm excited for it. it but I'm more of the right mood. No, I'm more of a Thanksgiving kind of guy. Thanksgiving music type of guy. No, th- that's when it starts. Yeah, I'm messing with you. I eat that dinner and <laughs> Thanksgiving music. We could come I over. think I think I am I am on generally I'm on team post Black Friday. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like let's let's let Thanksgiving be a holiday. Yeah, yeah. Uh so um yeah, we're going to talk about Final Vibe updates and then uh we'll do some Q&A, some fun questions and answers. We're going to keep it short today, but we're still going to hang out with you guys on this Tuesday. Uh, because that's what we do. That's what we like to do. And we've had a blast doing this now for a few months, and we're going to keep it going. Boom, boom, boom. Rolling it in. Kevin, give us an update. Talk to us about your life, your endeavors, your yeah. mission, your pursuit. So a couple of weeks ago, dropped my first vlog ever in my life. I think I cranked out three episodes in about a week and a half or so, and then my work started. All my students moved back. Uh, for those of you who may not know, I am the general manager of Mizzou Esports, which is a competitive video game program at the University of Missouri. And that takes up quite a bit of my time. So my students all moved back and now I'm still trying to figure out my new schedule. And that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, but the vlog dropped and then uh, we started some some fun endeavors. And October is going to be a big month for all of those. Big month. Big month. Uh, throughout the summer, got into biking and I declared on this podcast that I was going to bike 100 miles. And I think we're going to try to make that happen on October 10th. We want to make it happen. We are fighting tooth and nail to yeah. make it happen. 10, 10, 20. Oh, wow. 100. Oh, dude. Of course it has wow. to be that. It's got to be that day now, no matter how long it takes. Yeah, we didn't even realize that until we, you said it. Yeah, 10, 10, uh, it'll be dope t-shirts. 10, 10, 20, 100. So we're going to do that, uh, hopefully, on that day. Uh, knock out the 100-mile ride. And then I, I'm going to be honest. It is cold in the mornings. And it's going to be a little bit nipply. This biking in the mornings, I was Googling last night what people wear when it's 40 degrees or 45 degrees, and it's quite a bit, and it's hard to get. I used to run when it was like 20 degrees, but biking is just different. So I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do this winter. I'm looking at some maybe indoor solutions that could be fun. Um, I got a couple ideas for that too. So. Yeah, I'm thinking the Missouri climate, you've got to find an indoor option. Yeah. You can't be out there with ice hands all winter. There's some fun things. It's like virtual racing things that you can do as yep. well so you can post the bike up in front of a tv and pretend like i'm yeah that's a, gonna be you. beautiful that's it, for sure gonna be you it probably will be me so uh yeah so the ride is going to happen soon another thing that i introduced was operation 170 yeah why don't you unpack that for everyone and which vlog did you talk about this in was it two or three episode three episode three the last uh last episode that i have uploaded which hopefully is not the case by the time you're listening no to it won't be and yeah. on your behalf i want to encourage everybody to go to your youtube channel and watch it 
Yeah. Check in. I think it hits at like the eight minute mark or something. something Operation like 170. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, educate yourself. But Kevin, remind the people what it is. Yeah, so my goal is to get back to a weight that I was at probably 10 years ago, 170 pounds. And when I stepped on the scale the day that I released that vlog, I was at 192. So it's about 22 pounds that I want to lose. Um, and I've, I've mentioned this on the podcast before. I have some stomach issues that I deal with. So my weight will fluctuate significantly. And there's a chance that I hit 170 before I feel like I'm actually where I want to be, if that makes sense. Uh, so right now, today, you know, I was—I think I was one. What did I say that it was? You said you were 182. Today I was 182, uh, which is a significant drop in a short amount of time. But again, I think that that's just me trying to adapt to. Well, my, in uh, in the fitness biz, we would call that bad data. You know what data. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because. Uh, you know, hopefully don't you, you don't mind me sharing this, but you just haven't been able to eat as much. Right. So like your body weight is dropping and you're probably losing a little bit of water weight. Yep. So it's probably not like the 182 that you really want. Correct. It's sort of a, it's like a deflated 182. Exactly. Yep. Yes. So that's where I'm, I say 170, but there's a chance we hit 170 and, and we're not actually right uh, quite there yet. So things are going in the right direction, but I need to figure out, uh, I'm, and I, my stomach will come and go as far as the issues that I have, but when I can eat properly, then I can lift properly and work out properly as well. We're headed back in the right direction. So that is the, uh, that's what that is. And I want to incorporate my journey to 170 and beyond on that vlog. So that's my plan. Boomtown. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So also to be clear, I'm going to be there vlogging with you for your 100 mile ride, my yeah, friend. It's going to be fun. I'm going to be the man behind the camera and we're going to get some sick footage. Yeah, I got to reach out to G Ma Jan, who made an appearance on last week's Jima episode. G Jan, what a peach of a woman. I would love if G Ma Jan could join me for the last yes. 10, 20 miles of yep. that ride. Um, she says that she doesn't think she'll be able to go fast enough. I've assured her that when I hit mile 80, it won't anybody will be able to match my pace. Yeah. So we'll have fun doing that. Hopefully she can tag along, but we'll knock that off of the list. I'm rooting for it. The next two weeks. How about yourself? We both have had some, I don't want to say lofty goals, but we've, we've, publicly announce some big things we want to do and you my friend have checked some pretty sweet things off the off the list i feel good i i try to say that as humbly as possible but i just feel happy with what i've been able to do and i, I don't want to get complacent and i don't want to be arrogant or anything like that but uh i'm feeling celebratory on the inside because I think it should. does feel good so to be clear uh ivory has been going uh really well I've been uh, I've been taking on more clients and I've got a number in my head that I'll keep private, but I've got a number in my head that I want to hit. Uh, it's about I think the top end of what I can provide and give everybody still a good one-on-one -on -one experience without becoming too stretched thin. Uh, because what you do see in the fitness industry a lot is people scaling at all costs, uh, and usually the personal side of things is the first to go in the name of apps or automated emails or whatever it may be. So I'm trying to keep that personal touch. Josh and I, uh, Josh is my co-partner in the Ivory business, and he and I did a photo shoot yesterday. Big boy photo shoot. Big boy photo shoot. It was cool. It was uh, the photo shoot that marked the end of our fat loss phase, and Josh and I both looked uh, really good, in my opinion. Uh, so we got six shots. It was good vibes. We uh, you know, enjoyed some nice foods after that was over, and ultimately it was a big party. Beyond that... Uh, I, I did a thing, Kevin. What'd you do? I launched my YouTube channel this morning. This morning? This morning, the first vlog hit the YouTubes. And it feels good, man. I love YouTube. Yeah, I know you love YouTube. And wh what I'm excited for you about is that I pulled up your vlog on my phone. And oh, it, boy. The first, I mean, the, the, the thumbnail, the title, from start to finish, you are a YouTuber. I, tr I tried to I tried I to wait. do the first video as well as I could, and what's what's interesting is uh, the first video is it's impossible to get it perfect. Yeah, you know what I mean because you don't you don't have the skills that you need to be a YouTuber. It's like saying that your first bike race is going to be your best. It's just not like honestly the first video. I hope it's my worst. I hope yeah. it's the worst one I ever put out, and that's really hard for me because I want to bring like a, a level of excellence that I'm proud of. And I do have extremely high standards for myself and sometimes the people around me, but I am still happy with it. And beyond that, I'm happy with the adversity that I pushed through to get that video up. Yeah, because it wasn't let easy. me tell you, it was nightmarish. Yeah, we had different experiences. Mine was too easy. And I was like, 
Was that, was that good enough? I just uploaded it. Yeah, and I'll keep it really short, but basically, this is super funny, but when I got the camera, the the term 4K to me just meant, like, good. You know what I mean? I just thought that was sort of, like, the standard good. Like, everybody does 4K. Uh, so, I, so I shot everything in 4K, and the video that I watched on YouTube to get my camera set up recommended putting it on 4K. So here I am just doing what... Jason Vong? Is that his name? Yeah, Jason Vong on YouTube tells me to put on 4K. So I'm just videoing stuff and super long clips. And uh, when I start uploading all the footage to my laptop, I'm like two minutes into the upload, and the computer's like, your storage is maxed out, bro. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? I've literally got like 30 seconds of the clip in the computer. Anyway, long story short, I wind up getting a new computer totally unrelated to this and I'm flipping footage from one hard drive to another I'm messing with USB and USB-C and it's just a huge nightmare I finally get everything onto the new Mac all my files are missing Mm -hmm. so I gotta try to relink the files I'm fishing around on YouTube incessantly looking for videos everybody's like oh yeah it's so easy and for them it was for me it wasn't nothing worked and I went to a couple different like I would say video experts people are like I haven't seen this before let me call my – literally, the, the way it ends is the guy goes, yeah, I actually had to get a hold of my friend who lives in Czechoslovakia. Naturally. It's just hilarious to me. Yeah. But anyway, um, the channel was delayed a couple weeks, to be honest, and I'm okay saying that because I want people to hear that it wasn't a perfect process, and I decided not to ditch the video because it meant enough to me to, like, push through that. And now, dude, every video is going to feel like cake. Yep. Now that I have the workflow down, psh, yep. game over. I can't wait. Oh, and the last thing I was going to say was – the video is basically a generic welcome to the channel and it's a little vlog format. I'm messing around with the vlog style, but I do give you some value. And then I show you uh, a walkthrough of the full body or the full upper body workout that I used most often to sort of help me with my 31 pound fat loss endeavor that ended yesterday. So boom, there it is. So boom, that looked dope. Anyway, Appreciate it, man. 4k you were decked out in the final vibe merch. And I was looked- wearing the, I was shamelessly <sighs> sporting the final vibe gear. It looked good. It looked good. And there was a reason why you couldn't just reshoot it, not in 4K. And it's because when everybody watches this, they'll realize it's it's a really good vlog. And it needed to be uploaded as as it was. So I'm glad you figured it out. Thanks to your help from the, the guy Czechos- from Czechoslovakia, yeah. Czechoslovakia. Yeah. There yep, you go. Yep, yep. <laughs> Amazing. Uh sweet. You know what's funny about content creators? Probably a lot of stuff, but you tell me. I, I saw a tweet the other day about this because there's this joke that like if TikTok got shut down or YouTube got shut down, all these content creators would need to get jobs at McDonald's. But in reality, those content creators, not to toot our own horns, but people who do YouTube cons- consistently or Facebook or whatever it is, there's a lot of work that goes into that. Dude, it's and not there's a, joke. a lot of skill set that goes For into sure. that too. So I think that's the... That's well, worth mentioning, I think. It's worth mentioning, and they get a bad rep because people are like, oh, you, you're you a YouTuber? I mean, people just don't give it the credit it deserves. But if you do YouTube well, you're paying attention to the lighting. I mean, you have to storyboard all your videos. Uh, it's just not casual. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, the better ones will stand out. Right. Why are we vlogging as we are in our upper 20s? How, how much longer? Dude, I've got... I've got four days left of my 20s. Four days left of our, Ooh, of your 20s. Pressure's on, baby. Um, and it's 2020. YouTube's been here for a long time. Why are we vlogging? Why are you vlogging? Why do you think we're doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Well, why don't you tell me first? Why are you vlogging? For me, I think we launched Final Vibe, and you and I are the... Obviously, we created what Final Vibe is and what we want it to be. And when people ask us, what is it? And we say it's a lifestyle brand... I think I realized that the easiest way to tell people what it is is to live the Fauna Vibe lifestyle. Do the thing, man. Live the life, yeah. Yeah, and then when people can tune in on YouTube, and someday I can say, well, there's 50 hours on YouTube that will show you exactly what Fauna Vibe is and what you can do if you follow that lifestyle. So that's what I hope that my channel is someday. Uh, But that's why I'm vlogging. That's right. Walking the walk. That's right. I totally agree. Yeah, mine's not so different. I mean... We do sometimes get that question of like, man, what is Final Vibe? Like, I don't really get it. I see you guys posting. I, I'm listening to the podcast, but I don't really get it. I just want to say really quick, don't overcomplicate it. It's a lifestyle brand, and uh, we've just attached our meaning to the pursuit of legacy. So, you know, when you wear the Final Vibe hat, it's just a reminder that you're about pursuing a meaningful story in your life. It's story. It's legacy. It's how you'll be remembered, not for vanity, not for glory, but for whatever you want it to be. So don't overcomplicate it. Just let Final Vibe be what it is. And uh, 
Kevin and I promised on day one to be pioneers of the mindset. So the vlog is very much an elaboration of that. Uh, we want to walk the walk and talk to talk. Yep. Nailed it. Nailed it. Kevin, what do we got next? I think we're going to we're gonna peel back the onion a little bit and talk about upcoming things for Fauna Vibe. Love onions. <laughs> I think I've said this in the podcast before. I used to listen to a podcast, and when he got transparent about the brand, he would say, we're going to peel back a layer of the onion. Love it. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. Just a little bit. I think people listening kind of like the idea of getting a sneak peek into the business side of Fauna Vibe and yes. kind of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, so we do have some... Small updates and then some bigger updates about what we're doing and where we're headed. Kevin, I know you're particularly excited about one particular development, and it has to do with apparel. Yes. Talk to me. So we have officially started pursuing official Final Vibe apparel. Swag. Swag. Uh, swag, merch, all kinds of stuff. And we are looking to to do it right from the get-go. We want to have high-quality stuff that, that, like Andrew said, when you're wearing it around town, whether it's a hoodie or a hat, or socks, whatever it is, the branding is there just as a reminder uh, to yourself about what this all is. But totally. then it's also just it's a dope logo. Yeah, and it's it going to look cool. cool. Like, let's not pretend for a second that all of it is just straight, meaningful pursuit of legacy. That Sometimes you just want to wear stuff because it looks cool. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. That's part of a brand. Yep. So we every single thing that we will ever sell, at least to the two of us, looks dope and is high quality. So... We have officially started uh, that, and we got some really fun things coming down the road. I would say probably a month from now. By the time we enter the month of November, we should have a couple new things that we can point to. And our goal is that by Black Friday, Final Vibe has a pretty long list of sweet things that you can buy. Uh, who, someone in your life, a, a nice Final Vibe gift. That's right. You'll be able to drop stuff in the cart. Yeah. We're also... Uh, slowly reimagining a membership of Final Vibe. And we've gone back and forth on this. And we we think that Final Vibe is unique by offering a membership like it does. And we want that to be uh, something that people are extremely excited about that is unique and, and comes with some immediate benefits. Uh, so we have some fun things that we're working on we uh, do. with that as well. We do. And it's worth saying that uh, you and I are open to pivoting when we need to pivot. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't want to pretend like we had this all figured out from day one. We had a big vision. Got to be able to roll with the punches. Yeah, and I knew without a doubt that by, when when we launch a company in the middle of a pandemic, I knew that without a doubt it would look a little different every couple months until life gets back to quote-unquote normal and we have an idea of where we've landed and where we're going. Uh, so we I've, we've sat around this table and dreamed big time about what we want Final Vibe to be over the years to come. Uh, and that's what we're doing now is just trying to figure out how to take those little steps to get to the bigger bigger goals. And That's right. We're dealing with COVID like everybody else is and trying to um, essentially create a brand online and we're doing the best that we can. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm excited about what's coming up. The biggest one I think that is is can impact people right now is the whole bean coffee. Whole bean coffee. I was going to say, we got to push the coffee. You are the coffee master. Ooh, I don't know about that, but I have been selling some bags. You've been selling some bags. Yep. I walk around with a huge trench coat and uh, I open up occasionally and you'll see just a bunch of shiny bags of Final Vibe coffee <laughs> hanging from the inside pocket. Yeah. I'm joking, but I have sold quite a few bags um, and I think it's because it's actually good coffee. Yeah. You know what I mean? I It's not like you and I are skeezy sales dudes and we're just trying to push coffee beans down people's throats. It's just no. like, I think it's I think it's cool that there is meaning attached to the brand. And here's the reality, folks. You, If you're a coffee drinker, you're going to drink coffee. Uh, I'm just going to say this. Why not buy it from us? Why not get your coffee from Final Vibe? Taste it. Try it. It's reasonably priced. Just give it a shot. And if you hate it, don't buy it again. Yeah. But if you do like it, hop on that subscription. We've got people hopping on the subscription. It feels good. And uh, I haven't gotten any real negative remarks about the coffee. People dig it. People it is, dig it. It's air roasted, so it's more unique than... Most of the coffee you're going to find. And it's low acidity, which yep. is a big deal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if for no other reason, keep your teeth in check, people. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Take yep. care of those dentures. Your teeth will feel better as will your stomach. All right. The next thing we wanted to touch on is just a quick overview of some of the, the last podcast episodes that we've done. Every week we see our numbers climb, which is awesome. There's new people jumping on board. And if they're anything like me, 
they're hesitant to go back and listen to old episodes because I love the new, what's mm-hmm. new and what's the latest. You want to feel relevant. Exactly, exactly. But I think what we've done and we've we've worked hard to do this is ensure that all of our episodes are are timely. Not not timely. What is the phrase? They're, they're always relevant. Yeah, timeless maybe. Timeless. So I think it's important for us just to roll through uh, just a couple and then people listening might one of these might um, – might just tickle your fancy. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking it will. I'm thinking it will. Last week, we talked to my grandma, Jan Kemker. Gma Jan. Gma Jan. We talked to her for about an hour and a half, uh, and it was really a special episode. I think that she had a lot to share, uh, and it was cool for us just to to sit down. Uh, we just It was more of a conversation. No questions written beforehand. We just sat down and, and talked about her life and what life and legacy means to somebody who's 75 years old and has seen a lot of stuff on this planet, which is pretty sweet. So we got to dive into that. And I think if you're looking for some perspective on time, that would be a fantastic episode. It's really good because things are strange now in the world. Things have been strange at other points in history, I am sure. But things have ebbed and flowed, and I was really like drawn into that perspective that she had because man it's just crazy to think about watching the world turn for 75 years you know and and you and I are 28 and 29 or whatever but like probably a third of our lives we weren't really cognizant of the world and the climate politically and just ideas and things like that but you know when you're 75 years old I mean you've had you've had 60 years of being a real person you know and thinking about stuff and I think that she brought an immense amount of value and I went home thinking about that fried egg sandwich, Mm -hmm. you know, and I still think about that and I'll think I'll think about that for a long time. Yeah, completely agree. The week before that, Kevin, we did an episode with uh, Angie Azani, Travis Craig, Martez Manuel, and Nate Pete from uh, CORE, but Nate and Martez are actually collegiate football players, playing at Mizzou, playing at Stanford. What was that episode like? That was a fantastic episode because we all got to, to meet in person. Uh, and sit around a, a big circle table and just kind of pick these people's brains about why they do what they do because what they do is really inspire younger people to find a passion and use that passion to accomplish whatever they want. And it is amazing the stories that they have told and sitting around this table are the people that uh, Angie and, and, and Travis started this and two of their shining stars are right there with us. And then having them talk about the young kids that they work with who are probably going to be at that table in a couple of years with awesome stories as well was, was really cool. It was really cool. And the legacy vibes were super strong in that one because I don't think, uh, I don't think they mind us saying this, but a lot of the guys that are in core, they just weren't dealt the best hand in life in terms of circumstances, you know, and they come from, from tough backgrounds and in tough situations. And the fact that those guys are making the choice not to just be, you know, maybe what society says they're supposed to be. And they said, no, we're going to overcome all of that and be better. Man, that's so amazing. And, and I think, I mean, you said inspiring young people, but I think inspiring all people. Yeah. Like when I was at the Mizzou game, when they played Alabama last weekend, I was looking for Martez on yep. every play, and whenever whenever he'd get a tackle, I'd hear it on the intercom, and I was just like, "That's cool," because I now know his story, and I know I now know that he's not just a guy who was like genetically blessed. He was a guy who, against a lot of odds, uh, made really amazing choices, worked really really hard academically and on the football field at every moment in his life, and now he's reaping the benefits. And I'm hoping to be able to watch Nate play yep. on Saturdays. Yeah, hopefully soon. Yeah. Seems like they're making the right moves that he will be able to play. I sure hope so. I heard for that, them, I think the for their sake. Day. Yeah, yeah. Week before that, we spoke to Jessica Evans on Zoom, and she is a, let me say this correctly, Mai Tai. No, well, that's no, the wrong No, that's the wrong one. way? Yeah, that's the drink. <laughs> Muay Thai. Muay Thai. Muay Thai fighter. Uh, she lives in California. She does. She has lived in Australia. She has. She has lived in Colombia. She has. And she is an incredible person. She is. Nailed it. Nailed it. No, and Jessica was super inspiring. That was, I mean, she's like that classic go-getter, no excuses, just get it done. And I relate to that because it's easy to talk to those people because you don't have to dance around uh, reality, really. You know what I mean? Like if you're falling short of your goal, 
she's the type of person that would just tell you gently, but she would tell you, you know what I mean? And I, I personally don't like to be surrounded by people who are just kind of there to make you feel good all the time. I genuinely want to be challenged by my peers and by the people in the room. And I respect Jessica immensely for that. Um, and she kicks butt. I think she's a big role model to a lot of chicks because I mean, she literally fights. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw this, if you're following her on Instagram, but she posted uh, a clip of, I think, her first fight. And uh, dude, it's ferocious, man, watching yeah. these girls punch each other in the face. It's nuts. I've been following her since that day. Yeah. It's amazing. Very cool episode. Uh, yeah, Jessica, if you're listening, thank you again for coming on. Absolutely. Rewind another week, Kevin. Where were we? That was a solo episode with you and I. We talked oh. about advice that we would give ourselves, kind of like this. We were just hanging out, chatting. Yep. Uh, so if you uh, enjoy this episode, go back and listen to episode 14. Last one we'll mention, episode 13, which was one month ago today, was with Kayla Timberlake, who's the head coach of the Mizzou Golden Girls, the dance squad that uh, dances during Mizzou football and basketball games. That's right. The the beloved Golden Girls, the the gold sequin dresses, a shining part of Mizzou sports history. It was awesome. Kayla was just a lot of fun, very down to earth. And uh, it was cool listening to her talk about legacy because uh, if you recall, she is only the third head coach in like the 50 plus year history of the the program. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's just a lot of tradition there. So very cool. Absolutely. Kevin, let's transition into uh, another part of the, the podcast. What do we have now? Next, we threw on our Instagram story a request for questions and we got some questions love it love questions i Uh, love i personally love the q a format yeah it's kind of fun talk to us the first question comes from william bradley william's been a follower since like the day one so william we appreciate you he says on my 100 mile ride do i plan to eat or drink and if so why that food or drink i like this question Here's the problem that I'm going to have. So I typically will ride west. And when I ride west, I get to go through Boonville, which is 30 miles from my house. There's a gas station there. And that's where I get a Red Bull and a Snickers bar. I'm going to be going east on this 100-mile ride. So there's no gas station. There's nowhere to stop. Uncharted territory. Uncharted territory. So I'm going to have this little bag that hooks onto my my handlebars. It's not little. It's a medium-sized bag. So it's going to be whatever I can fit in there. So before I leave, I will eat a bagel, probably plain, and I will do... Exciting. Exciting. Say more. Plain old bagel, uh, a small cup of iced coffee, and then probably one Pop-Tart. Interesting. I, yeah. Tell us why. That seems so calculated and random. It does seem... It is calculated. It is random. Uh, it can't be both, Kevin. <laughs> It has to be one or the other. It was random, and now it's calculated. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it feels so good. It feels good. Yeah. But I I don't know. I've, at this point, I've gone 70 miles with that as my start, so I just do it because it, it's what works. Nothing goes on that bagel, and the Pop-Tarts are delicious. I, I admire that you can get away with eating so little, man. I'd be like, I'd be at Fazoli's the night before, and then the morning of, I'd be like uh, bagels, Nutella, protein shakes, Gatorade. I'd have some creatine on drip and the platypus on my back. <laughs> But yeah. you know what you need. I'm here to support you. And well, and I'll eat. I'll. I would say by the time I'm done, I will have consumed like 800 calories total. Because I bring some of these. There's uh, Stroop waffles. I think they're called. Um, and there's a couple hundred calories per. And then there's bully a couple hundred. A couple hundred. And then there's uh, goos that I'll do. But at the pace that I go, it's not like a extremely daunting level of physical activity. So um, probably not as much as you would think. For 100 miles, but it will take seven or eight hours. Yeah, it's going to be no joke. Uh, and when I am done, I will eat a full meal and probably go to town. And the, my biggest, what I'm worried about is the water situation because I'll bring right, two bottles right. of water. Um, but I'm going to have to figure something out somewhere along the way. Checkpoints? Checkpoints. Yeah, maybe so, we can meet you somewhere. Well, that's true. If you're, yeah, if you're, if you're doing the filming, you could hook me up and maybe we'll have more food involved too. So totally, I'll report totally. back on what I eat, but thanks for the question. Yeah, you? that's a good question. All right, we have a question from Alexa, and she says, what's one important lesson that you've learned from launching a business, and have we made any rookie mistakes? One important lesson that I have learned. I will say this, and she will like my answer because she's my wife. I've learned that if you're going to do a big thing, you've really got to have your time management skills in check and you got to be willing to 
not only do more than maybe you would like want to ideally, but you have to be able to plan for tomorrow and the day after. And uh, I've I've been burned a little bit by that um, just because it's my tendency to to go, go, go and do, do, do and not necessarily plan as well as I should. I'm not a bad planner by any means. Like we've been doing this and we've been doing it well, but we have ambitious goals and we have ambitious timelines about how we're getting this content pumped out. And so uh, I would say the last thing I've learned is that you, you do have to be on top of your time management skills. Big time. That's what about one. you, Kevin? I was going to go the time management route as well, just because it is such a big aspect of a side project like this. The other thing that I've learned, not necessarily from Final Vibe, but from the other projects that I've done over the years, is that it, it all comes down to the team that you work with when you do these projects. That's so, so true. If you're by yourself at the beginning, that's great. You know your limits and it's fun to do everything yourself because you can't mess anything up. And if you do, it's your fault. But as soon as another person is involved and every day after that, uh, your focus needs to be on ensuring that you have the best team possible uh, to help you get the job done, that they're motivated and excited to be a part of whatever it is. Um, and that's true for me in, in every aspect of my life right now. And the only reason I'm able to accomplish a fraction of what I do is because of the amazing people who I get to work with on a daily basis with Final Vibe, with eSports, everything else that I do. So it's all about the team. It's all about the me. team. That's a really good point. Yeah. Uh, I, I probably underestimate that more often than I should, really. Because if you don't have the team, it's it's not only bad vibes, but it's it's a lack of productivity and everything goes downhill from there. You yeah, I have a squad. I struggle with it because I used to think that I could, and I work very fast. I can do things quickly. You do, and I would think that I don't have the time to delegate this. It would just—it's easier for me to do it. Yeah. And what I've learned over the last few years is that while it might pump the brakes a little bit in the short term to get other people to buy into what I'm doing and to help out, it might slow me down for a little bit. But when there's other people months later working for the same goal, you can accomplish so much more. Yep. It's Even a temporary it's dip in the graph and the slope, and then the slope turns up again. Exactly. But you have to make that investment if you want to be able to scale it long term. Yep. You know what I mean? She says any rookie mistakes. So you and I were talking about this, and and there hasn't been any major faux pas yet. Nothing nothing that really wrecked us. No, not with Final Vibe. So far. So far. Yeah. Which is good. So far. I'm sure there's one coming down the pipe, though. We'll see if uh, we'll see if something happens between now when this podcast launches. Right, right. No, we'll be good. Another question: If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Hard question because I've never lived in any of the places I might be tempted to say. So how yeah. should I really know right. <laughs> if I would enjoy it? Um, honestly, I love living in Colombia, but that's boring, and and I'll I'll level up for the question. <laughs> I would say. Man, it just depends. Like, am I supposed to take into account like real life, or is this mainly just like you know, you know, if you could, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's say real life. Real life. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Like, fair. we still got to make things happen. Right. Okay. I think if I could, if I could live in Southern California and thrive, that would be ideal. I have no interest in doing the Southern California grind right. where you're just another dot on the map. Yeah. And you're paying a billion dollars a month for rent. I'm just not really interested in that. But if I could, if I could have a place on the beach, you know, secluded, you know, if I could, if, if I could live in Lauren Conrad's place from uh, Laguna Beach, sure. yeah, I'm there for that. Yeah. I'm there for that. Give me that. What do you think living in a place with beautiful weather like that does to your physical health? Like, do they live longer in California? Do people live longer in California? I don't know. I mean, at some point, like bad weather is like, it does put you in that zone of physiological distress, you know? Yeah. So I would think that, you know, if it really is 70 to 80 balmy all year round, uh, yes, but also like the air quality is awful. Right. So, uh, yeah, you know, give and take. Balance. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. just, I think about that because sometimes I, obviously I play video games and I get to play with people all around the world. And there's times where someone will say, I live in San Diego or I live in Orlando. And I'm like, is that just the most amazing thing in the world? And nine times out of 10, they're like, no, I hate it. And as soon as I can, I'm moving. Right. And that really trips me up. Yeah, it's I'm weird. Like, can like, really? The grass is always greener. And that's exactly. why, that's yeah. why I'm quick to say that I really love Columbia because right. here's the reality, people. Cost of living here, pretty reasonable. Oh, yeah. I really That's love amazing. the cost of living. Yeah. And and we've spoken about this too, Kevin, but if Final Vibe takes off and life gets fun or whatever you want to call it, I really like the idea of staying here in Colombia and just kind of bopping around to different places. You know? HQ1 is yeah, always here. Totally, yeah. Taking taking a trip to California, taking a trip to the East Coast, 
you know, wherever it may be. But then, the, but the landing pad is always in Colombia. Life is simple here, man. Our friends are here. I love Colombia. Yep, I do too. It's a cool place. It's so unique. I feel like the 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 demographics and the college town and another thing that I, I was thinking about the other day. I've been blessed that since I've got my first job, it's been with a university. So I have this cyclical job where things are always, students are here and then they're gone and then there's a break and then there's not. And and it kind of breaks up the year for me and it makes things go by, I don't want to say fast, but it's, there's just always something exciting coming down the road. I love the seasons too. Yeah. I, I think it really does revolve around the university. Yeah, it, it, it does here. Uh, so I, I like that a lot. And I, I yeah. wonder if I... If I had a job where it was the same Monday to Friday, January to December, yep. I don't know. I've never had that life. I know. I think I, – so I love the seasons here in Missouri too, like the actual seasons, like fall, winter, and whatnot, because like it changes, and it does feel like there's a rhythm to the year, and I wonder if that gets lost in California Yeah, because it's just like the same. What's that? Uh, Tosh.0, oh, he used to say he loves the seasons. That's why he lives in a state that skips the bad ones. Mm. That's what he used to say. But I, I mean, that's cryptic. What does that even mean? He just he lives in California and hates winter. Oh, okay, winter. gotcha. Hates the hates the winter. Cool for you, Daniel. <laughs> yes. Where would you live? I would want to say uh, like a Southern California thing as well, just to kind of try that out. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna out. lie. Obviously, I'm I'm a Joe Rogan fan from a podcasting standpoint, and I don't know. Apparently, that's a political thing to say these days. But whatever. I've been oh wow! To him. Yeah. I thought you were just saying that you enjoyed his. His, his show. show. <laughs> I do just enjoy oh, okay. his show. <laughs> this is confusing. Uh-huh. Uh, and he recently moved to Austin, Texas, and he's talking about um, building this ranch and, and how cool Texas is and how much fun stuff there is to do there, which is almost the opposite of the big city life. But uh, I think we've talked about Hamilton, Missouri, our, our good friend Cole and Sarah Crawford that live there in the small town in, in uh, Missouri. And I kind of like that too. So I don't know. I got to... Yeah, now actually that you got my my mind thinking, if I had to maybe go like another place, I uh, so <laughs> I've had some weird experiences in Utah, but the Lake Tahoe area Ooh, in photos, so I've not been, but the photos, and I actually follow a YouTuber that lives in St. George, and dude, it's just beautiful, man. Like they're they're within access to all these mountain ranges, and it's crazy. So if I, but again, like what I'm saying here is, if I could live like the high life then I'm picking these places. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really want to just like go live in an apartment in Utah. <laughs> right. So we made it anyway. Yeah. Maybe that's helpful to the question. That's a fun question. Thank you for that. Yes. Last one that we received. What is the most influential thing you've learned through creating final vibe through the interviews, et cetera, about our own legacy? What was I going to read it one more time? What is the most influential thing that we've learned influential through thing. creating final vibe? about our own legacy. Okay. Yeah. I'll talk. Okay. So I think what's most, what's been most influential to me is I hesitate to say that we even created final vibe. We, we put a name to an idea mm -hmm. and people have been doing final vibe stuff probably since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. Um, but we just slapped a logo on it and, uh, now we're rallying around it, trying to make it a lifestyle brand. So, uh, I'm still learning from the brand, really, and knowing that it's all about legacy and being one of the first two guys to launch this so that I'll, I'll forever be a role model of this this company, it's motivating on a level that I could have never achieved just sort of being a regular guy. So I guess what I'm saying is the accountability is massive, and I, I wake up every day knowing that um, not everything is in my control. Many things are not in my control, but what is in my control, I'd like to make the best of those things, and I'd like to make the best of my time, and i like to make the best of my life, uh, not in a selfish way necessarily, uh, but I do want to maximize, so achieve goals, love people well, take risks, get after opportunities, and just be hesitant to, uh, to say no to a cool thing. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. That's fantastic. I would say for me, it's a lot of the, it goes back to time as well. And that's what I've been contemplating on since the beginning of all of this is, is what is time? How much do we have and what do we do with it? And as you've said, we, we are certainly not the first people to talk about a lot of these things. And as I research uh, legacy and philosophy and mindsets towards what this is, what we're doing, it comes down to people having this conception of what time is and how much time they have to accomplish what they want to. And the reason why we started Final Vibe is because it's no secret that 
in today's day and age, we are more disconnected from the fact that time does not stop and this is all going to come to an end. And we spend a significant amount of time looking at and worrying about irrelevant things to the, to the overall picture, the legacy that we're trying to, to leave. So that's what I've, through these conversations that we've had, whether it's my grandma or whether it's a mother of four boys or whatever it is, hearing different people from completely different walks of life sit down and all, when you ask them the question, how do you want to be remembered? What does legacy mean to you? What does it mean to do this? Hearing these different people talk about those things, we all have the same thing in common is that when you sit down and you force somebody to think about it, I think people realize, wow, this is a really special thing that we have in, in life. It's just an idea that we had and we started thinking about a little bit and we thought, what if we try to motivate other people to think about this as well? And that's, that's what this is. So for us, months later, I think we're doing that. And I think we're all at the same time just getting started. I, sh- I sure hope so, man. I, uh, I want to be quick to be humble and I want to hesitate to get too excited, but I believe in Final Vibe. I really do. And I'm subjecting myself to Final Vibe and everything that it can be for myself. And uh, if I'm only ever a leader and a motivator to other people, even that I never hear of, because one goofy thing we talk about is we look at the analytics for the podcast. And uh, I mean, the numbers aren't like super bumping. You know, we're not Joe Rogan, but they're more than maybe we would have expected. Mm -hmm. And people tell us fairly often that they listen and that they're enjoying it and they say nice things to us. And that's really cool. And I don't say that to toot our own horns, but it just makes me believe in what we're doing. Yep. And I want people to come along for the ride authentically uh, because you and I are not trying to get rich on Final Vibe. Uh, we're trying to do a cool thing. Right. And you don't have to spend a dollar to be a part of Final you Vibe. You don't. If you're listening to this right now and you're like, dang, this sounds pretty dope. What do I do? Come up with a goal, something you want to accomplish. Which direction do you want your life to go? And if it's different than where it's at now, document that journey. Tag us. Follow us. We will go along this journey with you, and our goal is to create content to help you along the way. So our dream is that months, years from now, we have people all over the world, hashtag Fauna Vibe, doing cool stuff. Whether it's riding 100 miles, whether it's raising a family, whatever it is, everybody's got their own Final Vibe. But if they all have this mindset, top of mind, most days, more days than not, right? unstoppable. And everything, like every dollar that you could spend toward Final Vibe is just icing on the cake. Right. You know what I mean? Like. Yep. The only reason you should ever buy a hat is if you want to buy the hat, if you like the hat, if the hat means something to you. The only reason you should ever buy the coffee is if you enjoy the coffee. You know, this isn't anything more than that. Anything more than something that you want to invest in because you believe in it. Final vibe. Final vibe. Should we wrap it up? Drop the beat. Yeah, I think we should. I think we should wrap it up. I think it's a good uh, good episode, man. Solo episode up. Yeah. And we'll just tell the people we're experimenting with the lengths of these episodes. Yeah. What do you guys like? Tell us. Tell us. You like the 90 minute? You like the 45 minute? We'll sit here for seven hours if people oh, man, want us to. I really to. would. I would. I'll say this, and I'm not saying our podcast has to become this, but there are podcasts that I have been listening to for years, and I just love the people. Genuinely love the people. Love hanging out with them. They can talk about anything. I'm here for it. And uh, one of them is always an hour. I always want it to be longer. Every time. Wow. Well, maybe people do. Maybe we'll people will email us and be like, maybe you guys should shoot for like five to 10 minutes. Yeah. Maybe five to five, 10 minute episode would be ideal. Would be hurt or excuse me. That would hurt my feelings, but I'd be get over it. Be easier for you to edit. It would. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kevin, you know what I think you should do? I think you should do what you do best. And one of the things that you do best in life and in all things is talk. And specifically when I say talk, I mean, give these people the famous Kevin Reap outro. Send them into their Tuesday with a smile on their face and a vibe on their heart. You know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the first time in a couple of weeks, I don't have anything written down. So this is coming straight from the heart. But folks, we really do appreciate everybody listening. And we hope that you enjoy the rest of your Tuesdays. We are having an absolute blast hanging out every week, talking about life and legacy with all of you. And we hope that you guys are as well. You can find us online at Final Vibe or FinalVibe.com. And we have a lot of fun things coming down the road in the very near future. That's all we got for you guys. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesdays. Enjoy the rest of your week. Andrew's now officially 30 as you're listening to this. How about that? Happy birthday. Man, it's the first day of my 30s. Wow. If it's Tuesday morning and you're listening, yeah. my birthday was yesterday. Cheers, people. How about that? The anyway, dirty 30s are here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, thanks, guys, for listening. We will chat with you soon. Catch you next week. Bye.